Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenen Natasha Naman, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So in the last two weeks, I have released a video which covers about the overview of machine learning model development, which was inspired by one of the infographic that I have drawn and shared on social media, such as Facebook and LinkedIn, as well as Twitter. And collectively, it has received more than 2,000 likes. And so I figured out that it is probably an interesting topic that I should create a video about, and which I did, on the development of machine learning models. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please find the link down below in the description. And so two days ago, I released another infographic which covers the landscape of data science. So the inspiration of that infographic are coming from you guys from various channels such as on Twitter, on Reddit, on Facebook. So the question goes, what is the pathway on becoming a data scientist? Or what are the skill sets that are required to become a data scientist? What kind of courses should you take to become a data scientist? And with the explosion of the field of data science, with the introduction and emergence of new data analytics, machine learning frameworks, which might leave the beginner behind because the field is moving very rapidly and it might be a bit difficult to keep track of that. And so I spent the couple of weeks doodling on the iPad, an infographic which summarizes some of the key concepts, frameworks, skill sets, and important data science concepts and topics that you should consider when first starting out or to keep up to date on the field. So let me open up this infographic that I was talking about. So as you can see here on LinkedIn, on my own LinkedIn profile, I have shared this data science landscape. And so here's a look at the Facebook post of this infographic. And yes, indeed, this infographic is meant to be a concise summary or a burst eye view of the field of data science, the landscape of data science. So please feel free to use this as a rough guideline on some of the topics that you should learn about or be aware of. So to download a copy of this infographic on the landscape of data science, please find the link in the description of this video. Okay, so let's have a look. So in this infographic, we have a total of eight major concepts here. Data pre-processing, statistics, mathematics, software engineering, data visualization, machine learning, and soft skills. So a disclaimer before we begin. So this infographic is not meant to be an exhaustive list of all data science concepts, because if it were, it wouldn't fit into this one page. But this is a modest attempt to provide a summary, burst eye view of the landscape of data science. So let me know in the comments which topics that you would like to see and if I can incorporate it into this infographic or perhaps create a new infographic, let me know. Or if you have some ideas on a possible infographic that you would like me to create, let me know also down below in the comments. So greatly appreciate your ideas. Okay, so let's have a look at the first concept in order of the workflow of creating a data mining or data science model. So one of the first steps that you would have to be aware of is about the data. And so the first step would be to obtain the data that you are going to use for your analysis. And so data can be structured or unstructured. And if it is structured, it is normally in the form of a tabular format in which there are rows and columns where columns will describe the variables and the rows will represent the data samples in the data set. And for the columns or variables, most will be the independent variables or the variables that serve as the input and some will be the output variable or the variables that you would like to predict the outcome of, which will serve, so to say, as a class label. Okay. And so as one of you guys have suggested, natural language 
language processing is missing in this infographic. And so I'm thinking of probably having it included in obtaining data. So in natural language processing, the input data would be the text. And so these texts are essentially in unstructured form. And other unstructured data could include as well the audio, the image, the video, either it will be pre-recorded videos and real-time videos coming from computer vision. And so that's obtaining the data. An important part of the data pre-processing workflow would be to handle missing data. And so one of the previous infographic that I have created is dedicated to how we can handle missing data. And the most easiest way to handle the missing data is to make the data set complete, meaning that columns or rows that contain missing values will be deleted from the data set. But this counts at a cost of a reduction of the data size. So the number of columns or the number of rows could be significantly trimmed down. However, there are ways to replace these missing values either by using the column mean, median, or mode, or to predict the missing value in the context of other values that are already present in the column. Okay, and another important concept in data pre-processing is data cleaning. So this is to ensure that the text or the strings or the numerical values are properly and correctly spelled out or that it does not contain any typo errors or also to maintain the consistency of the data set such as the naming of the data values inside each of the column because if the values are misspelled then this would give rise to a new categorical value inside the column so great care has to be taken in that step also another important concept in data pre-processing is feature engineering so aside from obtaining the features in which it could come from databases or it could be freshly measured and an interesting area in this would be to find out ways on how you can engineer novel features, which could come from simply subjecting it to logarithmic transformation, combining multiple variables together, simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, finding the ratio of variable A to B, the variable C to D, or even multiplying it by some constant values. So these would allow you to generate novel features. However, you have to be aware of the meaning of of such generated features and how that will potentially be interpreted after the model has been built during the feature importance or model interpretation phase. And another important topic in the data pre-processing concept would be feature selection because, because the feature generation and feature engineering step could come up with several thousands of variables and perhaps many of these will contain no values at all or there will be inherently collinearity in which several variables will contain the same information and so we will have to handle such large volume of features by performing feature selection. So feature selection could be done by, for example, removing variables which contain very low variance because if variables contain low variance, it means that it does not provide any meaningful information. So for example, if 99% or 99.99% of the values of a particular column or variable contains the same value, for example, a value of zero, and 0.0001% contains a value such as one. And so for the purpose of developing robust models, such variables would have to be removed. Or another would be to remove variables which exhibit similar trends and behavior by computing the intra-correlation matrix in which it is essentially a pairwise Pearson's correlation coefficient matrix. And so for a given pair of variables which has high correlation coefficient value, we will remove one of them and keep one of them. And so this will be performed iteratively until we obtain a set of variables which contains the Pearson's correlation coefficient value less than the established threshold value. So for example, we could set the threshold value to be 0 0.6 or 0.7. And if a pairwise between variable one, variable two contains coefficient of greater than 0 
six, which is the threshold, then we would remove one of them, right? And then this is the first iteration. And then do the same thing over and over again until there is no pair which exceed the threshold that we have established. And so this roughly concludes the data pre-processing group of concept. And let's hop on to the next one, statistics. So undeniably, statistics is an essential part of data science and it is at the backbone of data science. And some of the core concept of statistics would include inferential statistics, hypothesis testing, experimental design, and descriptive statistics. So for example, in descriptive statistics, we are able to get a glimpse of the relative distribution of the data, the comparison of multiple variables by means of comparing the mean of the variables, evaluating differences between variables, either two variables as in a t-test or amongst multiple variables as in the ANOVA. Okay, and so let's hop on to the next concept, which is mathematics. So at the other end of the spectrum, mathematics provides the fundamental in which it will help you to understand the underlying mathematics behind several machine learning algorithms such as deep learning, neural network, principal component analysis, etc. And so some of the concepts here would be linear algebra, discrete mathematics, optimization, probability theory, calculus, real analysis, geometry. And so as you can see, mathematics and statistics will help you to understand the logic, the concepts of the learning algorithms under the hood, which will also help you to understand the limitations, the strengths and weaknesses of different learning algorithms, which would help you to select the optimal learning algorithm or select the optimal statistical test to evaluate your hypothesis, validate your hypothesis, as well as in the development of your machine learning model. And so another important concept here would also be data visualization. So in data visualization, it is essentially the creation of graphical plots to visualize the distribution of the data points as well as the composition of the data, the relationship between variables, between data points. So each of these subtypes here, comparison, relationship, distribution, composition, will be sub-branched into the different types of plots. Okay, so now let's hop on to the meat of the data science landscape, which is machine learning. And so this is a very important concept here. And it might be mistaken by newcomers to the field in which they would focus on only using machine learning or they might understand that machine learning is the only important concept that they should be aware of. But in fact, this is only the tip of the iceberg. And so there are a lot of stacks of essential concepts such as statistics, data visualization, mathematics, data preprocessing, software engineering, as well as programming and also soft skills. So most of the attention in the field of data science might be given to machine learning and perhaps programming as well, which I will cover in just a moment. So machine learning might be the attention grabber of the field of data science as it represents artificial intelligence, learning from data, making sense of data, right? using fancy algorithms, deep learning, support vector machine. But under the hood, machine learning wouldn't be robust if the underlying data is plagued with missing data, missing values, features are improperly calculated, data is not properly cleaned, inappropriate statistics are used to evaluate the data set, right? So in order to develop meaningful machine learning models, one would also have to strengthen their background on the basic concepts as mentioned previously, right? So programming is a central player which modulates statistics, data preprocessing, mathematics, data visualization, and machine learning. And there are a lot of programming languages out there. And so at the fundamental level, you would want to learn either R or Python for your data analytics, right? As I have just released a video about which programming language should you learn for data science. And in that video, I covered about R and Python. And of course, there are several other languages that are up and coming, but historically R and Python are 
in the game longer. And so as a result, it has a lot of accompanying libraries and packages that are available for making many of the data science tasks a lot easier, particularly if you're working in, let's say, economics or life science, biology, chemistry. There are already existing packages that will make your analysis a lot easier owing to the specialized function, which would otherwise require you to create your own function, which could be quite complex. So of these languages, if I could recommend, it would be nice if you could use the bash if you're working in a Linux environment or Unix environment, such as on a Mac and on a Linux as well. And lately, Windows also has an application in which you could run the command prompt from Ubuntu. And of the R and Python languages, I would recommend you to select one of them and use for performing the various tasks of data science, such as pre-processing the data, performing statistical analysis, visualizing the data, performing some mathematical operations, as well as constructing the machine learning model. And if you're working with big data set, then SQL is an indispensable tool. So you should also learn that as well. So aside from programming, it would also be useful if you could also be aware of some of the subcategories of this concept of software engineering. So if you're working in a big team, you might already have someone working as a data engineer to assist you in tasks such as model deployment, parallel computing, optimizing your code to make it run faster, or performing version control, performing code optimization, as well as debugging or testing of the code. Also, if you could also read up on the best practices for software development, be aware of data structure and web development, particularly if you would like to deploy your model so that it will be accessible online or via the intranet. And so the last concept here, is the soft skills. So the aforementioned seven concepts would be the technical skills of data science. And the soft skill of data science should not be overlooked. And so the soft skill will essentially be those that allow you to interact with other members of your team or the stakeholders or your customers or different departments within your company, such as you would interact with people from the sales department, people from the marketing department, providing them with insights from your prediction model, and you could also learn about the data or the interpretation of the data by talking to the people from various departments of the company. So they provide you with domain knowledge. And an important skill would be to communicate your data, right? So storytelling in the form of data visualization. So how can you make a beautiful, appealing, and meaningful data visualization, which will be essentially data storytelling, and if you could communicate that to the stakeholders. So presentation skill would be an important thing to have. Writing skill, problem solving, creativity, and also grit. So grit is probably one of the important traits for a beginner who is from a non-technical background. So oftentimes, learning a new discipline such as data science is an overwhelming endeavor. So without grit, you might give up in the first couple of months because of the unfamiliarity of the field, because of the overwhelming concepts that you will have to digest in essentially climbing up the mountain of various data science concepts. So the first mountain would probably be programming and then mathematics also, and the various algorithms to learn or choose or select in the development of your machine learning models. So grit, perseverance is a must if you are starting out from a non-technical background. And in my opinion, one of the most important would also be curiosity. So with curiosity comes the origin of your urge or desire to know, to learn, to make sense of the data. So you are kind of like a news reporter. You want to go behind the scene. You want to get the data. You want to understand the root of the cause of the problem that you are going to analyze. So in that, you will have to do many things aside from building models. You might have to talk to the stakeholders. You might have to read up on books in the domain so that you could acquire domain knowledge. 
So curiosity will spark your motivation, your urge and desire to move forward in your data science project. And as a result, data science is a lifetime learning endeavor because new algorithms, new software packages will be introduced and the field will evolve. And so having an open mindset, honing your skills, learning new skills is crucial for success in data science. And so I wish you best of luck in your journey into this very exciting field, data science. And so if you're venturing into this field, please have a look at the infographic. Think of it as a blueprint or a starter map, which will help you to explore what is there to know in data science. So if you find value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and comments down below sharing us your journey into data science. And also, if you would like to see a, a new infographic, what topic would you like to see? Comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.